Hello everyone, with the Tron here, and we're back on Heroes of the Storm. And in today's video, we're gonna play some Nazebo. And the reason being is that he has been a channel favorite for you guys, and I just think lately he's not really been all that great. So with the laning changes and all that stuff, he's become he's always been that late game monster, right? So with that being said, now that his late game or the late game doesn't happen as much as it used to. This makes Nazebo much more uh, of a liability for your team because he doesn't really come online until you hit the late game. And they did try to move some of his power back into his early game by giving more spiders damage baseline and stuff like that, even though we still see Toad build as the uh, go-to build for the most part. And then other than that, Superstition was bugged to where it was... Uh, always having uptime that has since been fixed uh, back when Hanzo I do believe was released and then the soul harvest town here at level 16 has become the go-to town here at and I really actually enjoy this town and it gives Nazebo a little bit more active play so with that everyone thank you all for joining me on this adventure with Nazebo we're gonna jump into it he's the Grinch and it's also the last day before the Winter Vale is gone so this is totally thematic here because all of the presents are going away. So for those of you, when this comes out, you won't be able to get the skins anymore, but I hope you guys got all the skins that you wanted. Anyways, we're going to jump in the game, everybody. Alrighty, team, we've landed on Blackheart's Bay. Not a terrible map for Nazebo, honestly, and I love the skin and mount combo. I have the moldy cookie with the, gi the, gi the gingerbread Grinch skin. Now, looking at the enemy team, they have a D.Va, they have a Greymane, Arthas, Zul'jin, and Raynor. So, they don't have the support, and even though they will be diving me, I don't think Toad build will be my choice for this game. I'm actually going to go with Widowmaker's level 1, going to throw some spiders on the fools. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Arthas is extremely scared of spiders, and you know what, it's going to be pretty fun. I like spider build, honestly. Toad build is a little... It's one of those builds that... Haha, be trapped in the zombie wall. Um, that if they don't walk into you, you're not going to get any stacks. But as you can see, the enemy team has been doing an amazing job of walking into us. And I hit D.Va with the spiders like a so We're doing work. Also, I gotta say... Quick match lately has had so many murkies, it's absolutely ridiculous. I'm gonna rotate to the middle, get ready for the shrines. He totally missed that route. Zombie wall. I dropped the zombie wall because I was afraid the material there was gonna die. They looks like they killed Zuljin in the top lane. Gonna throw a spider over at Diva there. That actually will do a ton of damage to her. And maybe I'll turn me cannon on your foes. The spirits aid you. All right. We must Where it is, there's treasure. The treasure chests have arrived. You're gonna use a zombie wall like so. And we looks like we have Raynor Trapped. Pop this trait. You need to leave, little buddy. But he stayed just a little too late, but we will get the kill no matter what. Gray main. No, don't you dare think about it. Don't you dare. Okay, he's gonna he's trying to go for Nova. I'm okay with that. Alright, gonna go back and get full HP because they do have quite a bursty team. We're already at 28 out of 100 hits from our spiders, so we're not doing too terrible. Basically, when I played Nazebo, at least if I go any of these quests. Uh, you kind of have to change the way you play, even though you still have the Voodoo Ritual stacking mechanic. You want to get these stacks as much as possible, so you want to lane against someone who's kind of slow and usually melee range, because otherwise you'll get outpoked. So we're going to try and get Raynor to bait him forward. Nice little buddy. Aww. Just going just gonna, to gonna zone him away. Um, Alright, level 4. So you're going to want to go for the... What is it? Big Voodoo. So with the ritual changes, um, with how the health stacking and everything works now, uh, Nazebo gets a lot more value from getting this talent and is pretty much the go-to here because of 
how much you need to stack now compared to previous. Uh, I forget what the breakpoint was, but if you check out Math, uh, Math of the Storm, Chaos OS, he did a, an amazing write-up. His ultimate is coming for him, but I'm going to act. But we'll throw a spider jar and we'll just take that as our consolation prize. Uh, I was not looking up here. It was a baddie. Because I was talking, telling my story, stuff and things. But basically, this is the go-to town because it just helps you get that much more tankiness into the late game. As you want to be doing on the Zebo. Looks like they are turning in, so I'm going to head with the team over to here, even though we are currently slightly down. Looks like we got a, there's two siege camps fighting away. They're slightly a lead there. And, well, they got it anyway, so just going to group or go back to the mid lane and get my soaks. There's one. I want stacks. Give me the stacks. If I can sit in the lane, you can basically get your level 20 stacks before you hit level 16. That's if you're just left uncontested. There we go. Teal did a good job baiting them backwards. He's gonna fall back to the front tower here because there was Zuljin over here, or Raynor rather. Right, level seven is here. And to go along with the spider build, you just do Spirit of a Cure. So this spawns a two additional spiders when you hit a single enemy hero with it. Oh no, just single enemy. So that just gives you more single target damage, period. Not better lane clear, but single target damage. Makes your life easier when you're doing bosses or if you're going to uh, try and burst down a single target. Nazebo's damage is inherently slower. He does not have any burst, but he does provide a lot of zone control for your team. I don't want to say he's bad because he's still good on, on stacking maps or maps, or if you can guarantee your team can hit level 20, stalling out the game. Like if you try to pair him with a Ragnaros or something like that, which I don't really recommend because Ragnaros is inherently has the same issues as Zebo has in weaknesses, low mobility and of lack of defensive utility or just hard CC in general. So that being said, kind of a bad example, but still an idea. The, nonetheless, I'm gonna try and grab the trigger though. He really wanted that. <laughs> But he got nothing for it, and as you can see, with regen globes and stacking this properly, I'm able to stay relatively full health, and we've already had 60 stacks Let's skip the treasure out of our 175 that we would need if we wanted to go for that talent. I gotta be careful here because they are very close. Alright, I'm gonna throw a spider jar and kill most of these, and then rotate to the mid. They have to be careful over here. All right, we're about to hit 10, so I can go group. We're going to go for... They're very tanky, and we just rather have zone control. Um, so I'm just going to go for Dark Buddy. Just the better talent in this tier, and it gives you more utility into the late game. Uh, assuming I... If I want to go for the Dark Buddy upgrade to Mongoid here, which I would think if you're going to pick Nazebo on one of the maps like uh, Tomb of Spider Queen or something like that, is very, very good. Unless you want to go to a late game, like with large maps, such as... Uh, we're just going to just spawn Guard Buddy here so we can get them to go away. They did a lot of damage to Guard Buddy. Hanzo used his ultimate, but he put it in a very awkward position, so it didn't do too much. Trio used Sank, and he got out. So, sanctification on a team comp like we have is not ideal. Sanctification is best used for teams that want to clump up and teams that want to or have a dive of some sort. Like if Tyrion was on the enemy team with the Grey Mane, that is 100% a scenario where you want to use Sanctification. But in our setup, there's really no one who can follow up with that. Unless he wants to use it defensively when the enemy team collapses, that can make sense. But the way he used it was not ideal. 
And then this brings me to my next part, is that specialists, I would say, are super, super annoying currently. The game has shifted to early game, so heroes like Sylvanas, especially in quick match, which, then again, this is not a huge representation of how to play this at a high competitive level, or even any competitive level for that matter. But, it's still important nonetheless to talk about these things, because the way you play a hero, I would say quick match is the battleground that you learn how to do all these other things, and then if you can learn how to do it well enough, confident in your abilities to be using them in a competitive setting so it looks like i use spiders there but they all despawn because the um, diva mech died which is interesting whoa boy was not expecting graymane to just jump out of that bush second death but we've done 11,000 hero damage which is not a whole ton but we were soaking quite a bit we're just below murky in siege damage Okay, a little bit better of a dragon, but not much. Uh, dragon Strike is much more of a zoning tool than anything else. The damage, it's such a slow ability and the range is such an awkward tool that I don't really recommend that ability. So, 13 is upon us. We're going to go for Ice Block. This is just the go-to talent now, and players have finally gotten used to your... The use of this ability to be able to appeal for you after you use it. I used to say this was a tool that was used for competitive sake. Uriel's gonna die and drop all of his coins. And it's gonna really stink. Go away! Arthas, be gone with ye! Okay. Gonna just drop. Not drop her. Okay, we killed the Diva Mech. Okay, Rinner queued. Nice! Zul'jin did not make it. I did waste Gargi Ready a little bit because they just instantly backed up, but I guess that's what the point. Just zone people back. Don't give up any structures. Especially on maps like this. Giving up a structure not in a team fight, or in a team fight rather, not in due to the objective, is really, really bad. Haha. -ha. I missed my spider dart. I overcalculated. Hanzo was way out of bounds. Curious. A hero has abandoned and the someone left. A Hondo left. A hero has rejoined the battle. The truth I have to be really careful here because we don't know where the rest of their damage is. <laughs> Alright. Where did he go? He went for Rhyme at level 1, so we're okay. Down the wall. Guard buddies in two seconds. And we're not gonna make it out. So I thought about popping guard buddy, but I didn't. Either way though, Murky has stacked up the top lane and we're taking the front wall of a keep right now. We still have a one fort up. They have 18 coins though. Looks like your foe beat you to it. Let this be a lesson to you. We have lost the fort. So the Arthas in solo queue is really hard to deal with. He's so tanky and he's just got so much utility when it comes to being slowed um, that you just can't. Once he gets too close to you and it's just really, really hard to be... Uh, able to just keep him at bay. The only thing we can do is out damage him, make him pop his ghouls early, and then we can go from there. But for the most part, it's really hard to deal with. Uh, we need to leave. So Hanzo went a very awkward direction. Choose a talent. Okay, they're def we need to defend this. Gonna pop guard so we can kill this camp much, much faster. Because this camp needs to die. Easy. Got the zombie wall. Missed the, missed the root. That's actually pretty good. Trying to kill Diva's mech. Yep, there it is. She has not done in a single explosion this whole time. Which kind of feeds us experience. Which means we're doing actually okay. Level 16 is here, so we're doing our soul harvest. 
this works for enemies, not just heroes, but enemies as well. So you stand near them, you get a little bit of health back, and then that just got me killed because he got rid um, But you would have a da damage buff after that. But that root just destroyed me. And our team was not grouping fast enough. Tyrell has fallen as well. Sarth is just on point right now. I mean, he's not really on point, but he's like just doing damage. And just where he needs to be targeting. Attacking who needs to attack. Diva still hasn't used her explosion at all. And that's the other part I was going to bring up. So this is how the meta's changed. Having a tank, especially one like Arthas, is going to make you that much harder to kill. With the double globe changes, these pushes are much, much stronger. Um, having a gap close or just self-sustain in some form or fashion gives you that much more utility, period. And then being able to sustain through heavy input damage, especially in the form of Hanzo and myself as Nazebo, we have very little burst. Like We almost have no burst at all. And the only thing that we can do is just hopefully burst him through his... His little bit that he can. Um, why did he use that so short? Anyways, even Mac is dead. Ours is gonna land a root on three of us. Good sank there though. Gonna pop that. Keep running. Gonna use toads. Hanzo needs to stop channeling. This land. We have vision here. Ah, now I but we see. didn't get anything. We're kind of just buying time for Murky right now. I need to get stacks. I'm at 120. <clears throat> Nobody needs to be careful. Without hesitation. I'll just get this camp since they already cleared that up. So the other thing about. Diva having Diva on their team, as I said in my other Diva video. You know what? She just is everybody. yep. She can I'm find stealthy so easily me. because she can just boost into them. And I don't know, she probably forgot that she could be seen so easily. Keep up, keep and so that's why she died. Very, very bad. For them, they have enough to turn in. Yes, they do. Missed the region globe. We got him three more stacks. I, we need to baby this bottom lane. We also need to get a turn. But with us having one down, it makes us just that much in a negative situation. And Hanzo dies as well. He rolls out. And that's it. Got one. Tyrael died. Two. Like, there's no point to be there. They just fed them whatever little coins that we did have. And I'm trying to see if I can. Is there? Is there? No, there's not. There is no way I can destroy. So we're just gonna head up to the top lane and get some XP. No. So I don't know. So this is another symptom too. Is you don't want to fight down. You need to regroup, go in as a team, as a unit, and go in there. We're down to level 20 and we don't want to continue to, to give them and feed them kills especially when they have burst damage and self-healing uh, such as they do they have effectively two life bars in both of their tanks Tyrael is nowhere near a, a frontline tank like either of them are even though I wouldn't consider Dar uh, D.Va a frontline tank in the slightest but it's still like you just don't want to do that and we're only at 140 out of the 175 we would need we're about to hit level 20, so I need to really focus on getting stacks soon. And by soon, I mean I should have already had it done. They still have enough to turn in. We're about to hit level 20. They're a level up from our level 20. Choose a talent. Uh, I need to go file infection, or is this going to be game over sooner than later? And the enemy team is killing waves too fast for me to be able to soak. Fields fight. And that's going to be our last keep. They're coming from behind. Fire, 
Got two in the zombie wall. But as I said, I don't have... There's the first explosion of D.Va. That sink is going to go down before D.Va's explosion lands. Uh, I'm actually just going to back over here. No, I'm not. That didn't hit him? I hope it hit him. I don't know if it hit him. And, uh, Hans was doing 70,000 hero damage. He was zoned out alone. It looked like. From the D.Va. D.Va can just chase people forever. I'm gonna kill these three catapults that have stacked up in the top lane, along with this massive minion wave. But with that, we actually kind of turned this game back in our favor. We got a four-man kill. Murky still has that camp pushing top lane. And if we get, like, one or two turn-ins, which is not possible currently, it still could be a thing. Gonna heal up. Doesn't give me that much health, because it is the minion wave, but it gives me the spell hard bonus to be able to clear waves faster. We could do boss soon. Yes. true. You can basically have 100% of time, it has a 15 second cooldown, and increases your spell power up to 35%. And that's why th this is really used for the toads as well, because the toads get their own damage bonus when it's uh, the max range. So when they explode and do the increased AoE damage, that's why. Okay, we just need this wave and we'll have our 175, so now we'll be able to do some more damage. And now we're a full hero. So, hopefully, we can make this work. Looks like they're chasing Nova right now, so I'm going to try and turn in. We need to leave Nova. She's absolutely not worth saving. Oh my gosh. You think you can open both chests, you landlubbers? Spirits, guide us. The enemy is attacking our core. Oh no! They come from behind times. Hanzo baited him up, and the rest of their team followed. We had enough for a turn. Oh, we still we do have enough for it. Nope, not anymore. And that's gonna be game. But it is what it is. It wasn't going good in our favor, anyways. Um, but that's Zebo, everybody. He hasn't really changed in a while, but these landing changes do make him weaker. And as we can see, Murky is doing Murky things. But yeah, uh, when you got two specials on your team, it usually doesn't go out too well. You can kind of just play the defensive push game, but when they have dive and lockdown, it makes your life a nightmare. All right, everybody. So that's going to do it for Nazebo. Um, I was just thinking about this too, is... Nazipo actually got worse at pushing towers as well because the abilities, the zombie wall here, used to t used to eat shots from the towers and forts, but with the infinite ammo, it now no longer does that. So it just gives him less and less pushing potential because draining ammo made it that much easier to push lanes down. And now Nazipo's kind of lost that that one little flavor that he actually gained from before. And it feels a little, I was just trying to think about it. And while we were loading back out, I just remembered right now. And so that's just another little thing why Nazebo is not as powerful as he was before. So with that, everybody, thank you all for joining me in this video. I really appreciate it. And let me know what you guys think in the comments about Nazebo. He's still one of my favorite heroes. I kind of just enjoy him just to play him, have fun. No big deal. No tryhards or anything like that. But other than that, I feel like he could, like they need to do something about these towers again because certain heroes that really gained from them no longer do that and yeah just growing pains of the game so to speak so thank you all for joining me one more time everybody and see you in the next one